Ghana has become the most attractive destination for Nigerians seeking university education on the African continent. The reasons for this yearly influx of Nigerian students in the former Gold Coast have been many. From 1999 to 2013 alone, Nigerian university lecturers went on strike for a record 12 times, including a historic 2003-2004 stroke strike that crippled academic activities in universities for six whole months in Nigeria while lecturers were negotiating government over pay increments. Speculative figures as of 2011 put the number of Nigerian students studying in Ghana at above 70,000. That number has however dropped after the 2016 recession. I have been across the length and breadth of Ghana, speaking with these Nigerian students and finding out the many reasons that bring them to studying in Ghana, including some cases of unaccredited universities where these students have been duped or even defrauded. A graduation ceremony in one of Ghana's private universities. Nearly 73% of the students graduating here today at the second Manipur University College are Nigerians. So, Abdullah. Abdullahi Radiat Asabe, a Nigerian student from Kogi State, has emerged the best graduating student overall, beating nearly 1,000 graduates to attain this feat. I feel, I feel happy and I feel thankful too, same to God and to my parents, because without them, I wouldn't be taking the award for best student and also the overall best student. So I feel happy and I feel grateful. And the reason why for all this, or let me just say the, um, the purpose, there's nothing much to it. It's just prayer and hard work. Yeah, and there's, it's not like I'm special or more special than any other student. And the biggest secret to it all is group reading. Yeah, and which is something everybody knows I do a lot. Not much was known about the population of Nigerians schooling in Ghana and the huge sums of money being invested in the Ghanaian economy through school fees paid annually until 2011, when former governor of the Nigerian Central Bank and now the Emir of Kano Malam Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, gave the intimidating figures, revealing that over 71,000 Nigerians were schooling in Ghanaian higher institutions. That figure jumped up to about 100,000 by 2015. 2016, Nigeria had gone into recession and that figure deeply depreciated. Yes, sincerely, why Ghana? There are numerous reasons why Nigerian students troop into this country. Some are cultural, which I will explain further, and some are due to, the, uh, they are due to socioeconomic uh, factors. I will go with the structure, cultural first. Uh, we all know that Nigeria and Ghana pre-independence, uh, British, West Africa, these are, they, they have such, you know, a lot of cultural, uh, you know, uh, relation. And even despite the fact that geographically they're not together, they think about Ghana next door. So in Nigeria, if you're not going to study in the Nigerian system, the next part of call is going to be Ghana. That is on the cultural perspective. And the, in terms of the socioeconomic uh, factor, we all know that Nigeria is a country of class, and we have a lot of uh, people from different social strata, those who can afford the ten thousand, tens of thousands of pounds in the UK or in America, and then uh, all this, all this, based on the situation of educational, uh, educational system in Nigeria. The bureaucratic bottleneck in getting admission to university, the lack of efficiency and effectiveness uh, that has to do with the jump or the admission, uh, what do you call it, a matriculation examination council in Nigeria. And the fact that if you follow statistics uh, in the media, we have about a million university ready uh, prospective students every year. And the Nigerian system can only accommodate, if I follow the last uh, statistic report, about 400,000 to 450,000 per year. Mind you, those from last year will also meet up this year, and we have hundreds of thousands of Nigerian students stranded in the system who cannot get access to the university, uh, university education due to the admission uh, bureaucracy that is involved. And the, the corruption in the system that has to do with, uh, you know, uh, ethno, uh, I mean, ethnic sentiment about how one is admitted, and, you know, so even if you had cut off mark, 
as I speak with you, you know, uh, and this is this is based on information that is available. There might be much more to to that, but as I speak with you, there are about 152 universities in Nigeria. 40 of them are federal universities. 44 of them are private university. Um, sorry, 44 of them are state universities, and 68 of them are private universities. Now, every year you have over 1.3 million people writing jam. The, the university matriculation examination, which is overseen by the Joint Admission Matriculation Board. After this exam, you have about 500,000 or less qualifying to be in Nigerian universities, qualifying to be in these 152 universities in Nigeria. And you know that um, even though there's, there's this very strong speculation right now that the post-UME you know, is no longer existing or is about to be scrapped. There's, there's a lot of um, talk going on, you know, in, in, in that area. But let us even leave it at the university matriculation examination. And so what we're trying to say is that out of the a little over 1.3 million Nigerian students that write the UME every year, only about 500,000 of them will qualify ultimately to be in private, uh, pr private or public universities. What happens to the rest? But Nigerian students have continued to excel in Ghanaian universities, breaking records and making historic landmarks. The speculative revenue of nearly half a billion dollars has said to be generated by Nigerian students alone into the Ghanaian economy every year. Her school fees range from the list of $900 per semester to about $12,000 semesters in the public universities. The trend, despite its huge benefit to Ghana's economy, has also brought its problems. Rents in areas with these universities have gone high. Landlords around these university environments have taken advantage of the situation to increase rent, with some charging in dollars. The cost of livelihood here in Ghana is so, so high because uh, like when it comes to accommodation like getting a place for the students to stay and when it also comes to food it's very expensive like back day in Nigeria you can get a food for two cities and it will last you for like one full day but when you come down here to Ghana 10 cities food can never never last you for a full day this is Zenit University College and we have apartments all over around and when we, the Nigerian students, we go to get to these apartments, the prices they will tell you back there in Nigeria, you can use it to pay for at least five years. So the cost of livelihood here is so, so expensive and it's hard. The house rent here in Ghana is really expensive. You can get a house, just a one room apartment, and you can be paying like 300 and something thousand naira, which is really much. Because of our exchange rate is really bad right now. Ghan, living in Ghana as a Nigerian is really, really expensive for us. The economy is really bad in Nigeria and it's really affecting us. We all know we Nigerians are loud, yeah. But we have the really calm and cool ones. And um, Ghanaians are also cool. I can say that from the ones I've met. Within the dotted lines of this story, it's a long stretch of moving tragedy, wired around fraud and even death. Well, BMFI, they advertise for degree courses, HRM, accounting, financial management. Not knowing the school was just an HND school. They only had accreditation from the NAPTEP to run HND programs. And only one degree program, which was um, water management. But you see, they deceive Nigerian students into getting admission there. Some of them even got to their final levels, graduated, wrote their final exams, on discovering that the school wasn't accredited to run degree programs. You know, a lot of students were demoralized, they were frustrated, a lot of money were lost, and then I myself was also involved. I had an experience that I was a student there. It was by the grace of God we were able to sort ourselves out after the disappointments and all that. But I think the school is still functional. They are still running their HND program 
but no degree student there again, I don't think so. University education, when you get to the point where you are about to get into the university to study, you are at a very important phase of your life and it is not something you rush into. You're talking about 16, 17, 18, 19 year old people that are acting with so much desperation, you know, wanting to get into the university and they want to get into the university right now and graduate next year. They want to, you know, some of them even cut corners and you and I know this. You know, the, some of them cut corners, some of them are duped because the agents make them outrageous promises of, you know, how they can graduate from school in one year if they can pay this much and that much, just come in and A, B, C or D can be done for you. And they forget that you're coming into a country that has a functional system, that has an organization that oversees the operational universities called the National Accreditation Board. The National Accreditation Board has a website. The National Accreditation Board has a very accessible you know, system. You can walk in and get as much information as you want. There are 71 universities in, in, in Ghana. About uh, seven or nine of them are public universities and the rest are private universities affiliated to these public universities as mother institutions. The information is available. You can actually go out of your way. You don't even need to speak to anybody in Ghana to get that information. You can go on the, on the, on the National Accreditation Board website and you'll get the list of accredited, accredited universities in Ghana and the courses that they offer. IFN TV is receiving reports from the central region of Ghana that a Nigerian student by name George Ayogo has been murdered by unknown gunmen. Details are still sketchy, but reports claim his body was found by the roadside on Wednesday after being missing for about 24 hours. Within the dotted lines of this story is a long stretch of moving tragedy wired around fraud and even death. In some instances, educational consultancy firms in Nigeria collect huge sums of money from these students and bring them to unaccredited schools in Ghana. In most of these cases, they only get to know the schools they are attending are unaccredited only after completing their studies. These schools are scattered all over the country. December 2, 2014, another Nigerian student, Mohammed, was reported dead around Newtown, a suburb of Accra, allegedly stabbed by a marked man. Police investigations revealed days later that he had been killed by his self-confessed brother, Mustafa Musa Osmani, 22, a student in a private university in Ghana under the influence of drugs. Osmani claimed he had been taking some dose of diazepam every day to enable him to stay awake and study for more than five hours. But on Thursday night, he took 20 tablets instead of two and it influenced him wrongly. As bleak as this story sounds, Nigerian students schooling in Ghana are also blazing the trail. Hardly any graduation ceremony takes place in a Ghanaian university without a Nigerian student coming top. Ndi Ibe, a Nigerian student from Abia State, came out top of the graduating students in Zenit University College, Ghana, in 2016. <laughs> I would do a semester while I, I work. You know, I was thinking that Ghana is like Europe or, you know, the Western countries where you can work and uh, as well be schooling. So when I got there, I realized that the game was quite different. So. Uh, I paid my fees for that first semester, my hostel accommodation. It, it was really, it was very difficult. It was very difficult. So I tried looking around to see if I can get some, but something doing that can sustain me and also help me to pay my fees. Uh, but I wasn't getting. I went to my elder. So before I went to my I had already decided that I'll go back to Nigeria since 
there was no help coming. Even people I was thinking that when I get to here in Ghana, maybe from Nigeria they can help. But when I was calling, calling, nobody was minding me if I should use uh, you know the Ghana of uh, English. So nobody was minding me. Um, I, I decided to go back. Maybe go back, hustle a little bit, then I come back and continue. So also Talita Kumi, who beat the record in Calf University. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and profound gratitude to God and the entire Calf University College that I stand here today as the overall best student representing my fellow graduates. I thank God for making this possible. I finished my secondary school in 1999 and from 1999 I went to Benin City to do a diploma at Benson Edelsa University. Now after that diploma I tried to get into the university to get a degree but it was difficult for me to get that. So I tried, I wrote jam like three times, I couldn't get through it. So somebody called me and said, ah Ghana you don't need jam. Just your YA gift is complete, you can get admission. So I felt it's a big opportunity for me, even though it was expensive, but I decided to just come and do it. Another graduation ceremony in a Ghanaian university. This time, one of Ghana's most prestigious private universities, the Accra Institute of Technology, and Chiedu Ogeche Peace, a Nigerian has emerged once more as the overall best graduate in female students. So far it's not been easy. I wouldn't lie, it's been from one challenge to another, the reading, the shadow. At one point in time I was doing my IT too and still going to school. So it was it wasn't very easy. It was it was really challenging. But I thank God all the same. F support from friends, from family, loved ones. That was what kept me going. Myself. I you know got admission, I was fully to get admission to the University of Ibadan years ago, I, I scored even about 10 marks higher than the cut-off mark and I was told to go and study a course I never put in for, physiology. And I was wondering, this is not the course I applied for. Academically, I was sound, I was ready <clears throat> and I scored even more, 10 marks more. And people who even scored lower got admitted. So in that situation, that is bias. Sometimes born out of nepotism, who you know, or sometimes out of probably ethno-related, uh, you know, ethnocentrism, where you come from, name you bear. So these are some of the situations that let people in, uh, in Nigeria uh, look for ways to study abroad. The second issue is the, is the uncertainty that is surrounding university education in Nigeria these days. It, it, it's, it wasn't like that, you know, in the past. But I'll even use myself as, as an instance because it was in our generation that these problems began and started to get really bad. When I, you know, was, was being admitted into um, in university in Nigeria, we got our admission and were supposed to resume school on the 4th of November 1992. We ended up resuming on the 18th of January 1993 and did not write our first semester exam until the 1st of January 1994. I went into university to study a five-year course and it took me seven years to finish. There are people that have stayed longer in the universities in Nigeria. And so the uncertainty is very, very high. You know, when there are no strikes, maybe there are student riots or something is going wrong and all of that. There is no certainty when it comes to university education in Nigeria. The system is not that functional, uh, functional anymore. The system does not guarantee that you can start school in 2017 and you're studying a four-year course and so you're certain that by 2021 you would have left the university. There's so much uncertainty, you know. And so, and Ghana is, is, is the closest. You have a lot of Nigerian students in South Africa as well, you know, but Ghana is the closest that has, you know, um, a very functional system you know, and has an education system that is not so different, you know, from the Nigerian situation. And so, and so Ghana, Ghana is the closest, you know, and the cheapest option. And I'll also like to add a third reason, okay, which is the fact that some private universities in Nigeria even charge much more than you will pay as an international student in, in Ghana. 
And so, I mean, you, you think about it, you think about the advantages of leaving your, your country to go study elsewhere, and you, and you think that it might even be better to come to Ghana to study. Seriously, given my experience here in Ghana, I would choose Ghana over Nigeria when it comes to university studies. Now, they give you an easy platform for you to learn here. The politics we see in the Nigerian universities are less in Ghana. You don't even have that at all. If you have your work and it's complete, they look at it, they look at the course you've chosen, and you have your fees, you get admitted. And most times, they take 70% of your fee for you to start, even as a new student. And in Nigeria, you know how it is. You have to write jam. You have to write post UME. You have to uh, go through some uh, recommendations before you even get admitted, mostly. Except you want to go to a private university in Nigeria, which most of us can't even afford. This is the University of Ghana, Legon, one of Ghana's most prestigious public universities. Nigeria students here are the highest foreign students population in this university. Seated here in the midst of uh, Nigerian students, um, at, they, are, they are all students at the University of Ghana studying different courses. To find out um, their concerns, I've spoken to them individually, but I think they are all here now as a group to also tell us the kind of um, issues and the kind of challenges they are going through as um, Nigerian students in Ghana. Well, schooling in Ghana, hmm. It's not what I actually thought it to be like. I actually thought coming to Ghana would like things would kind of like be easier for me. But coming to Ghana, I found out that okay, the you know the powdered coating I was having in my head was not what I actually came. Powdered to. coating. What do you actually? Yeah, like the vision, the dreams I was having in my head is not the reality. I was a student once in University of Nigeria and Soka studying studying industrial chemistry, but I pulled off due to the strike issue to come over here. Life in Ghana has been boring for us, very terrible. We can't end our view possibly, clearly, anytime we feel like. They see most of us to be thieves. When we associate ourselves with the co-international students, which are not from Africa, the school authorities always tell them not to associate with us, that we are all thieves. So it hasn't been enough for us and we have tried to organize ourselves too well but they refused to have a mere organization for Nigerians alone. Our IESA has already been dissolved due to the nature of the thing happening. Other international students which are Africans are also complaining. But mainly the issue is Nigerian at hand. We have been suffering so much. We really need at least someone to talk to them to change their way of behavior. A few consensus have been here. You know, the act of uh, discrimination that's going on, you know, I uh, originally I live in the United States, so I didn't think that, you know, coming to an African country that I have to, you know, face the same challenges as a black man would face in the United States. So, um, you know, that's a bit of a, uh, what do you call it, preferential treatment. I'd say, uh, between uh, you know, the locals and uh, you know, not all of the international students I say, but particularly Nigerians. And uh, it's sad to see that going on here. This is my third year, this is my third year in Ghana. And then the first year was kind of rough because it wasn't so much or that conducive, but along and over the years, became better because I began to understand that cultural difference does exist and all that because that's my first time away from home. It is a very sad situation and there are a lot of out of truth in that, that some Nigerians, I will call them, I will always like to use the word unscrupulous element, who come into the country with the pretext of studying, you know, uh, some of them will get admitted to universities. After the first semester, they pull out. Some of the ladies who said they are into modeling, started running sort of advertisement on Instagram and agencies that are not registered saying they are having modeling, you know, some systematic sort of prostitution here and there. And the guys also get themselves engaged in fraudulent hacks like uh, computer, Yahoo, Yahoo, and all sort of 
you know, uh, acts like that. It is very, very sad. But in every society, the social vices are always there, irrespective of the nationality. But because of the number of Nigerians, the population of Nigeria, the numbers were very, very high compared to other nationalities. We have Francophones also who come to this country, who get themselves involved in all this act. But because Nigerians, I think three of every black in the world are Nigerians. And in this country, two of every three international students are Nigerians. Okay, so we, we have had a um, situation where students get admission into school here in Ghana, into um, government universities like um, Legon, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. These are government universities with high tuition fee, but the parents, the parents who send their school, their, their children to school here, they can afford it. But in cases where, we, we have cases where um, the students come here, they change into a cheaper university, cheaper private universities, and they still request for the same amount of fee as to what they get from the, the, the public universities. Now, sometimes those students are not even in school because we have cases of drug abuse, we have cases of prostitution and all sort of things. But therein, we don't blame the students. We, get, we blame the, the parents because how do you send your, your children to school in another country where you don't make proper information as to how they are faring or what they are doing or the kind of things they lay their hands on? But the train wasn't like this in the 70s and the 90s when thousands of Ghanaians trooped into Nigeria for greener pastures. A speculative figure of about 48% of the current Ghanaian population is said to have had or still have something to do with Nigeria, either by schooling, marriage, working and residing in the country. Something we'll take a look at in another episode of this story.